All right, so let's uh, move on from this now. Uh, we've talked about finding the solutions to quadratics. We've talked about graphing quadratics in both standard form and uh, vertex form. Uh, now we're going to start to build into uh, quadratic inequalities, where we have shaded regions, where it's not just the answer of the parabola. Right? Remember, obviously, the solution to any function is whatever you graph. It's every one of those points that are on the graph. Well, however, when we're dealing with uh, inequalities, we're dealing with something not only on the line, but also either above it, below it, and in this case, inside of it or outside of the parabola. And that's what we're going to build into. Now, the top half of this assignment on 16, all you're doing is practicing graphing it again. And I don't care if you use the standard form or the, quadra or the vertex form to graph it. I don't really care. We'll do one of each. And then on the bottom half of this, what you're doing is you're graphing the inequalities. Again, you can graph it however you need to graph it. I don't really care as long as you graph the quadratic and then find the solutions to that particular quadratic function. So if we take a look at, let's just go with number one right now. We take a look at number one on lesson 16. Again, this is what we've already done before. This is no different. We have the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 12x plus 32. And I want you to graph this. It says graph each of the following using quadra the following quadratic functions or equations using either standard form or vertex form. Now remember, the vertex formula is f of x is equal to a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, where h comma k will be your vertex. Alright, so... We have two ways of tackling this. Get it into this, determine your vertex, and then you use the standard, how the normal quadratic function operates to the left and the right of the vertex. Or we can factor that, determine your x-intercepts, okay, and then use the following vertex formula to determine the vertex. Negative b over 2a f of negative b over 2a. And that will get you the vertex as well. So again, it's standard form, vertex form, however you want to go about doing that. All right. So what would you rather use in this case to do this one here? Vertex. Vertex? All right. I personally like the ver uh, vertex form better. You can certainly do that. Um, but again, you're going to have to plug in some numbers and squares and stuff. And all that stuff. So I think it's a little bit easier to get it in a vertex form um, right here and then go from there. So let's do that. So we're going to have to complete the square at some point to find the perfect square that will make it, make it get into vertex form. So how do we start this? Set it to, well, we can just set it straight equal to zero. You're right, set it equal to y and plug <laughs> zero in because we're finding the zero, you know, we're finding the solutions to this. And then what do we do? Alright, we subtract the 32, we get away, uh, the uh, problematic area away, we'll just keep it as y. If you were to obviously use standard form, you'd keep it, put it at a 0, but we'll just keep it as this. And then subtract the 32, and we get y minus 32 is equal to x squared plus 12x, correct? Alright, we'll start this way and then we'll do the next one using the vertex. Uh, Standard form way. All right, now what do we do? Because again, we want to make sure we have a what? Perfect square here, correct? So, what do we need to do here? What's that? Complete the square. We do have a perfect square here, but in order to create a perfect square, we need to add something to this to make it a perfect square. So, how do we go about determining what to add here? Divide 12 by 2 and then square it. Yeah. Take the middle coefficient, divide it by 2. I get 6, right? But I have to, I can't add 6 here because that's not a perfect square, which won't allow us to get that perfect square that we need. So we have to square it to get 36, and that's what I'll be adding to my right-hand side. Correct? That's 
So what I'll be adding to make this a perfect square. And you're going to see in a minute that this is what we're going to have in our two, um, two factors there to make the perfect square. And then what I do to one side, I must what? You must do to the other. So I have y plus 4 is equal to x squared plus 12x plus 36. Now, factor this into the perfect square that it is now. They're both perfect squares now, made up of x and 6. And it'll factor into what? x plus 6. x plus 6. x plus 6. This plus 6 and this plus 6 is what you get in the middle right there. When you divide by 2, that's what you're going to need to put here, because you've got to double it to get the middle, right? That's the whole idea behind proving that this is a perfect square trinomial, is that this times this doubled equals my middle, which is what it is. And then we have what? y plus 4 on the left-hand side. This can condense down and simplify down to squared, and we have that. And then what's the final step here? Subtract the 4 over, minus 4, minus 4. y is equal to x plus 6 squared minus 4. Correct? Now, what is your vertex now? Because I need my vertex in order to graph this. And my vertex is negative 6 because, again, it needs to be of x minus h form. And my h is going to be my x value for my vertex. So that needs to be minus negative to make that positive, right? It needs to be a x minus negative 6. And that is my h. So it's negative 6 comma negative 4 is my vertex. And then I can go ahead and graph this, correct? Now we go ahead and graph this. All right, so how do we start this? First thing we got to do is what? Plot the vertex. Got to plot vertex, obviously, because everything off of that depends on where the vertex is, right? So negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and what? 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, right there. Now, obviously, on your graph, it's going to be much easier to graph than it is on the board, but you get the point. Now, we have to actually determine the point. So don't just, don't do that. I want more of an accurate graph. So we need to know what the heck is going on to the right of the vertex and to the left of the vertex. Now, remember, it's a mirror image. We have symmetry about, remember, this is a parabola. The U shape right here, where if you split it right down the middle, it's a mirror image on either side, right? So we have symmetry about the vertex here. So if we can find one side, we can easily find the other. What happens when I go one to the right of my vertex? Again, we're dealing with the standard function, the standard, the, the way a normal quadratic operates. When you go one position to the right of the vertex, that's plus one spot from the vertex. That means that I'm squaring that positive one and getting what? And then multiplying by whatever your a is. Now, in my case, what's my a? So I'm just multiplying by one, and that's what I move, right? So if I move one to the right, what? I have to go up one. So one to the right and up one. Now, what happens if I move two positions? I go back to the vertex, move two positions to the right. That's positive two units away from my vertex, correct? That would be two squared or positive two squared, which is four. times whatever is in front of my vertex form, which is one, so I move up what? Four. four. So two and then one, two, three, four. Now, if I did three positions, what would I do? Square, square which is? times whatever's in front, which is, I move up 9. Now you can see how if this changes, it can narrow or widen your parabola. So i got to go up 9. So, And then remember, there's symmetry about this vertex, so that means it's an exact replica on the other side. There you go. That 
is your graph. Now, I'm not even asking you to do max, min, domain, and range on this. I just want your graph. We're moving on. All right? Does that make sense? Now, let's talk about another one using standard form in case there are some of you that like the standard form version. Now, again, you're, you can use whatever you would like on these. I just wanted to show it to you, and then you can determine how you want to go about doing this. So, so let's go on to let's do number let's do number three. That's a different look to the graph right there. And then we'll talk about what to do with inequalities, because it's not much different. You still have to graph these using a normal method. And then you need to determine where the shaded regions lie. So let's take a look at number three. We have f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 14x minus 48. And we're going to use the standard form version, right? That means i got to factor this. Find the zeros. Find the x-intercepts of it. And theoretically speaking, if I find my x-intercepts and my vertex, I can connect the dots and I have my graph, right? Now, can you tell me anything just by looking at this, whether this is going to be upward facing or downward facing? As a negative 1 leading coefficient, right? It is an uh, even degree. So that means instead of going upward, it's going to now move downward. And we talked about the end behaviors of uh, polynomial functions. It's still the same because quadratic is a polynomial function. So we can tell right now that that's going to be downward facing. And if you don't get something that's downward facing, then you know you did something wrong. So how are we going to go about using the standard form method to do this? Step one is what? Set it equal to zero and start to factor this thing. All right, so... Alright, so set it equal to zero. And is there a GCF here? Well, again, there's no real GCF. However, I would not want to factor this if I have a negative leading coefficient. It just brings in a lot of problematic areas. So I don't really want to deal with that. So I would personally factor out a negative one. And all that factoring out of a negative 1 will do is make our leading coefficient now positive. And make this what? Plus 48. Correct? Now, factor this. It's not a perfect square. If that were 49, you know, that, might, that might work, right? So what are we going to do here? What's that? Right, so we got to try and figure out that we don't have perfect squares, right? We don't have cubes, we don't have four terms, so we got to go to guess and check. So we would factor the first term, which factors into, as we said, x and x. Only way to factor that. x and x. And then we look at our positive 48. We want what in the middle? Negative. Negative. A negative number, correct? And the only way to get a positive at the end and get a negative in the middle is to deal with a negative and a negative, right? So I'm looking for the factors of positive 48 that have negatives in it that when multiplied together give me 48. But add to up to what? Negative 14, right? So what are they? Negative 6 and what? Okay. Does that make sense? Now, once we're fully factored, we do what? To find our solutions, our x-intercepts, our zeros. Set everything equal to zero. Now, am I going to set negative 1 equal to zero? How many solutions should I get? Two. Two. Setting negative 1 equal to zero is going to give you nothing. It doesn't tell you anything. It tells you a, a false statement to begin with, and you can't get anything from that. So you're going to set x minus 6 equal to 0 and x minus 8 equal to 0. Correct? Good. Now, we're going to add 6 to each side. We get x is equal to 6. Add 8. We get x is equal to 8. Those are your two x-intercepts. Now, I can graph these right now. 
And I know I don't even really need to worry about anything on this side because I know based on these, I have x intercepts at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right here, 7, 8, right there. Correct? But we know this is downward facing, correct? So my, where does my vertex need to be? At least needs to be up here somewhere. Where it's going to be at, we've got to use the vertex formula here to help us find that. Because we're in standard form, we can use this to get us that vertex, and we connect the dots, and we're done. So, we have to use our vertex formula. Negative B over 2A is my x value. Negative B over 2A is my x value, and then F of negative B over 2A, meaning I plug that answer into my function and calculate, is going to be my other part of my vertex, my y value. So what is my A in this case? Take a look at your original function. What is my A? It is in standard form, right? That's why they call it the standard form method. What is my A? Negative 1. What is my B? 14. And what is my C? Remember, make sure you go to your original equation. Okay, your original one. Don't go to one right here where I factored out the negative 1, because then you're going to get all messed up. So what is negative, my x value is going to be negative 14 over 2 times what? 2 times negative 1, right? So what do I get here? That's negative 14 over negative 2, which gives me what? 7. Seven. So my vertex is going to have an x value of 7. And I've got to find out what the y value is. Again. Want to find a y value out, I need to take that answer and plug it back into my original function. All right? Now there's going to be some calculations here. And again, what method you choose, I don't care. If you like this one, then go with it. I, I tend to think that there's more work in the, involved in this one, or I like the other one better, but that's up to you. So we have to do what now? y is equal to negative... Uh, 7 squared plus 14 times 7 minus 48. Now be careful, am I squaring a negative 7 or am I squaring 7? Because that's where a lot of errors come into play, right? What am I actually squaring here? 7, correct? And what do I get? So I get negative times 49 plus 14 times 7 minus 48. You gotta square the seven and not the negative part, right? You're substituting seven in place. So we have what? Negative 49. What is 14 times seven? What is it? 98. Minus 48. Now well, what do we get when well, we combine and collect, collect all of them and add and subtract all these? One. We get one. So y is equal to one when x is equal to seven, which means my vertex is what? Would that make sense? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one. Would that make sense? Remember, that's the negative, so it should be downward facing, which means I have a quadratic parabola that looks like that. There you go. If you graphed it using the vertex formula here, you get something that looks exactly like this, except it would have a couple other points here as well. Whatever you use, I don't really care. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to move into the inequality portion of this. So let's take a look at number 11 and talk about that. This is not much different than what we've already been doing, except now we're going to take a look at this graph and determine where my shaded regions are, because we're dealing with inequalities now, and when you're dealing with inequalities, you're not just dealing with the answers that are on the actual graph, or the line, or the parabola you're drawing, but what is above it, below it, inside it, outside of it, depending on the inequality sign itself. So let's take a look at number 11. We have uh, y is less than or equal to 
x squared minus 18x plus 80. So let's use the vertex form because I think that personally is easier to use. And it's already in y equals form, correct? Don't worry about the inequality sign. Graph it as if it's an equation, and then we'll worry about the inequality sign at the end. So what are we going to do to start this off? i got to graph it. Yeah, i got to get it into that vertex formula. y minus 80 is less than or equal to x squared minus 18x, correct? All right, well, what do I add to this to make this a perfect square? To get it in that formula of a times quantity x minus h squared plus k. Well, half of the middle, right? Negative 18. Take the sign with it as well. And you get negative 9, right? That's what will be inside, if you pay attention to it, that's what will be inside of here. And you're going to watch what happens. That's what perfect square we're trying to create. But I have to square it to figure out what I'll be adding to this side, correct? What is negative 9 squared? 81. So I'll be adding 81 to that side, correct? To form this perfect square, which we're about to get to. But what do I have to do to my other side? Add 81 to my other side, correct? And what do I end up getting? Y plus 1 is less than or equal to, again, factor this, right? made up of x, made up of 9, those two perfect squares. Double it, it equals the middle, and the sign of the middle is what I put in it. And I end up getting exactly what I anticipated. Correct? Now I rewrite that, x minus 9 squared, and what do I do to finish this off? y is less than or equal to x minus 9 squared minus 1 with a vertex of what? 9, negative 1. So my vertex, and I'll just write it here so I can graph it over here, my vertex is equal to 9, negative 1. What number is in front of these parentheses? It's 1. There's nothing there, so it must be implied. If it's a 2, it's going to change things. So now we've got to graph this, just like we did previously. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, negative one. Is my vertex, correct? Now, is this going to be upward facing or downward facing? Can we tell? Well, my leading coefficient is positive, so it's going to be upward facing, right? So that means it better go up this way. Well, let's test it out. As I go one to the right, one unit to the right, one squared is basic functionality of quadratic times what? All right, so I go up one. So I'm here and there. Right? If I go two positions to the right, that's two squared, which is? Four. Times what? Four. Which gives me four. So up one, two, three, four. And if I go three positions, that's up what? Nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. And we have a mirror image on the other side, correct? So we can just go right here, right here, right there. Now, be careful. We have to connect our dots, much like we did with inequalities when we did just basic systems of our inequalities, graph basic to variable inequalities. How are we going to connect my dots to this parabola here? Is it going to be a solid line, meaning that it is equal to every point that's on that parabola, or is it going to be dashed, meaning it doesn't equal? Solid. Why solid? Because it has the equal to element to it. If I had this right here, what would it be? Dash. It would be dashed because there's no equal to element to it. But because I have equal to elements here, right, it must be a solid Line, whatever, I mean, it's not really a line, technically, but you know what I'm saying in that 
with, with that. You've got to connect it with a solid all along. That's what I said. Now, we're also doing an inequality. So it's not only equal to that parabola, but it's equal to what? Less than or equal to. Now, we've got to be careful. On a line, it's easy to tell what's less than or greater than because you look above and below. But here, we're dealing with inside or outside, so it's different. So we need to pick a test point. Always pick 0, 0 as a test point. If I pick 0, 0 here as a test point and plug it in, I'll be able to determine whether I am shading the outside or inside. If I plug 0, 0, always plug it back into your original. I get what? 0. If I plug in 0, 0 as a test point, again, it's my test point. I plug in 0, 0, I get what? 0 is less than or equal to what? Well, 0, 0 plus, so it's 80, correct? Is that a true statement or a false statement? Is 0 less than or equal to 80? Is that true? Yeah, 0 is definitely less than 80. So that means that what? 0, 0 is a solution, correct? And if it's a solution, where do I shade? Wherever 0, 0 is. If this came back as false, in this case it's true, but if it came back false, I'd shade the opposite region or the inside. Right now, I plug in 0, 0, it came back as a true statement. So I must shade on the outside of that parabola. Now be very careful, don't shade above this right here, right? Just because it doesn't, you're not shading inside doesn't mean that you can continue this over here. Because don't forget, this continues upward forever, right? So you've got to be very careful. You can only shade right in this region or right there. That's how you do deal with inequalities, quadratic inequalities. Does that make sense? Okay. We'll go over more of this on whenever I see you next week, Tuesday. All right. We'll go over more of this on Tuesday. I'd like you to finish this up. If you have any questions, please ask. The only new stuff we're adding to this is how we connect the dots, right? And we have to use a test point to determine where our shaded region is. It's the only difference. You're graphing it just like you did this. No difference. You already graphed a ton of these before. We're only adding one extra element to it. All right? Finish this up for Tuesday. There's only 16 questions. We did what? Three of them already? Oh, uh, only have 13 to go. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. You have a little bit to work on it now, but that will be due on Monday.